Hi, my name is Byron Martin here at Logis Greenhouses, and today we're going to be talking about a fragrant Southeast Asian plant called Aglaea odorata. And this plant has been in our collection for quite a few years. It's a favorite of people that are from um, Southeast Asia, China, and India. But it's also become a very popular plant in terms of those people that are interested in fragrance, in container plants, and also looking for plants that do fairly well inside the home under the distress of lower light and low humidity. So these are um, some plants that we have in the greenhouses. These are young cuttings that have been grown. This is also um, one of our stock plants, which has been cut back many times. So the flowers form on the uh, young growth or new growth, and they first emerge as sprays of small green uh, balls on the end of these long stems. And as they uh, mature and come into full bloom, they turn yellow. So this is actually an example of a plant that's in full bloom right now. The fragrance, um, which is um, quite strong at certain times of day, and at other times um, there's no fragrance at all, and it's quite variable. It seems to be related to like cloudier days when it's higher humidity, it can be very strong. There are times when we walk into the greenhouses where our mother plants are and it just overwhelms us. In terms of culture, they're quite easy to grow. Aglaea, um, there's several, two cultivars that we have and both of them will tolerate fairly low light even to shade and still grow. Flowering will increase if you um, increase your light level a little bit. Um, we use a standard potting mix for that, nothing special. Uh, this is a uh, peat light mix that um, has a pH of around 6, 5, 6, 2, 5, 8. So they do very well with that. The leaves stay nice and green um, at that pH level. As you can see, this has been pruned back many times. It's not really grown for its form, this particular one, because it's a mother plant. But you can see when you prune it, it creates a bushier habit to it. Now this young four inch pot here has never been pruned. And so it's a central lead that's coming up. Here's the one that was done by a cutting where the cutting was taking along the stem. It's made two leads on it. And um, in terms of culturing this, you can simply go in when they're very young like this and pinch out uh, those growing tips, which will help break that and create that fuller um, plant for you. A couple of the cultural issues that we face with this is that we do have, in the greenhouse culture, we do have edema that gets onto the leaves. And this is shown as a corky outgrowth on the um, upper surface of the leaves. And it really looks almost like an insect, but it's not. It's actually a physiological outgrowth. It causes no harm, and it's really more of a cosmetic issue than anything else, but we're often asked if the plant has bugs, and it doesn't. And it's really caused by uh, relative humidity, uh, temperature differential, and water and soil moisture. Those three things combined in a greenhouse situation where the humidity can be very high um, will cause this edema. And it's really a seasonal thing for us. It happens at certain times of the year. Um, grown outside, you never see it. But when you bring it into a greenhouse, we do have issues with that. As far as fertilizer goes, they, uh, when they're in active growth, you can see all this nice soft growth and young growth coming on them. They can use a fair amount of feed. Um, it's good to do it maybe uh, once a week, every couple weeks if you want, you can top dress some uh, granular organic on the top of that. Do do that once a month during the growing season. In the winter time, as everything slows down, these plants do too. But, um, you know, just back off on your feet as you go into the fall. As far as the flowering season on this, it's intermittent. We see them pretty much year round. We can always go in and find flowers on our plants. They grow for a while, they flower, they stop, they grow some more. It doesn't seem to be seasonal here in terms of day length or temperature. As far as temperatures go, we keep them in warm greenhouses. That's not necessary. You could grow these down into a cold greenhouse where it goes down into the 40s. They don't really care for freezing temperatures. It might take a little bit of a frost, but really want to keep them above freezing. Insects really are not a problem with Aglaea. We don't really see much of anything ever attacking them. Uh, mites or aphids or such things as that. So they're pretty much insect free, which is a good um, point to have when you're growing plants inside. So if you're looking for a plant that will give you uh, fragrance and has good resilience in terms of container and indoor growing, try an aglia. This is Byron Martin at Logies and thank you for watching.